<laughs> okay, so let me just um, uh, welcome each of you to tonight's um, Preservation Awards ceremony. This is actually the 22nd year that we have um, been uh, doing this ceremony, the Historic Preservation Commission. Um, many of you already know me um, for many years of working in the city, but for those that don't, my name is Brandon Wilson, and I head up the executive, I head up the, uh, the Somerville Historic Preservation Commission as executive director. Um, and this is the sixth time that we've been able to hold the ceremony here in the uh, Somerville Armory, and it's a pretty grand place, isn't it? Uh, I don't know if you hadn't been here before, but it, it's, if you haven't, it's, it's a great place to actually sponsor different events. It's very unique here in Somerville, and so I'd like to give you a little bit of background about the structure and the space that we're in, um, which is known as Arts at the Armory, um, and how it came to be. This building was constructed in 1903, and it may be hard to believe, but this um, actual place housed the Somerville Light Infantry of the Massachusetts Volunteer Militia. And after that, it was the home of the Massachusetts National Guard. Then it was periodically used um, for primarily for government functions, um, such as the local office of the 1980 National Census. And then in uh, 2004, the state of Massachusetts declared it as surplus property, and they sold it by auction. Two brothers, who also owned the Middle East restaurant in uh, Cambridge, brought th this actually huge structure and formed a development team to create a mixed-use project. Um, and among several of the uses that it serves is as a community arts center, and it offers wonderful cultural programming and gathering space, and not only for the city of Somerville, but for the whole Boston metropolitan area. Uh, the diversity of happenings that take place here are pretty amazing, um, and they range from the indoor winter farmer's market to flea markets to beer festivals, um, from wedding um, parties to political fundraisers, from citywide public meetings and charrettes, and to special events like Somerville is for Lovers, or dance performances, or musical concerts and drama productions, even a parkour fitness workshop, uh, and even um, more unusually, a major boxing match, which was full of referees and competitors wearing scantily little clothing. <laughs> Uh, the development team for the Armory Project worked with our office, the Preservation Commission, and they did a terrific job, to our mind, in restoring um, the, and, or preserving many aspects of the building, including um, the interior stairwells, the turrets on the exterior, as well as the entry doors and the windows. So I encourage you to kind of look around and see some of these features when you come in or, or uh, leave. Uh, when you entered, you might have noticed um, that there's even saved the drawbridge like a ramp that comes into the front lobby. If you thought you were on a slant, you really were. Uh, and um, we think we just did a very um, wonderful job in preserving the structure. So in 2009, we gave them one of the awards that you will be receiving tonight. So again, welcome to this historic performance hall in Somerville. It's great to see all of you here tonight. Many of you I recognize from working in the city on a variety of different causes um, with us. And um, a lot of you contribute to city life through elected office or um, for other active contributions to city life. Uh, many of you work on volunteer work for city boards or at the Somerville Museum or your students at Somerville High School. So tonight we're able to formally thank you um, for your city contributions, the wonderful work you've done on your property, or on the artwork that you've produced related to that property. Some of you here tonight are historic property owners, and at some point you have actually come before the commission. Um, but for those of you that do not own a historic property and haven't had the enjoyment of doing that, um, I'd like to explain a little bit about who the commission is and what its mission is. The Historic Preservation Commission, or the SHPC as they're known, is comprised of 14 members, and they're all volunteers, and they offer their time and their expertise freely. They include architects, historians, contractors, realtors, and people who simply have a strong interest in local history and architecture. Many of the commission members are here tonight, and some of them have even agreed to wear a name tag. So. 
Um, if you could stand up, the couple of you that are here that I see right now, maybe, that would be great. Eric and Ryan and Abby and... <laughs> Um, and you can find material on our website um, that gives a short profile about each of the members. The Commission also has the benefit of two full-time staff people who work with the property owners when they want to make alterations on the exterior of their historically designated properties. Uh, some of you may know them, which is Sarah White and Christy Chase. Christy is here tonight and she's raising her hand dutifully at the back. <laughs> So the Commission is truly delighted that all of you could come tonight and share in what is truly a Somerville community event. Several communities in Massachusetts actually sponsor a preservation awards program, but I don't believe that any of them are as all-encompassing as the one that we have here in Somerville. And this is because our program is actually in progress all year long. Um, it involves people from all walks of life in the city. And these people include the high school students, the residential property owners, local businesses, municipal and state officials, teachers, and local reporters. The wider public also benefits from the program through watching cable television, by reading interviews on the local media, and by coming to the final exhibit of the drawings that follows this ceremony over the coming summer and the winter months. I'll tell you more about that later. Now I'd like to give you a little bit of background about how the program actually happens and how many people's lives are touched by it. The awards program begins in the fall when the Historic Preservation Commission and members and its staff start to look at properties throughout the city um, that have been worked on in the recent past, and that generally means the last two years. We consider cases that have come before the commission um, for review, and we seek nominations from neighbors, from owners, public officials, friends, and the general public. We publicize the opportunity to nominate properties via notices in the local newspaper, on cable television, and by direct mailings, uh, phone calls, and in some cases, we even stop by your property. The commission uh, staff then contacts the head of the uh, CAD program at the Somerville High School, and that happens in late October when we begin working out a schedule to meet with his students. And this year is the fifth year that we've been able um, to work with a terrific teacher named Daniel Bendelt. And he took this over from someone um, else who really knew the program very well because he participated in it as a Somerville High School student who then graduated and took over the program <laughs> um, as the head of the, the CAD program. Uh, Daniel has actually expanded and upgraded um, the program over the last several years, and to give it even more of a pre-engineering and architectural bent, um, and now the CAD program is housed in the CTE, which stands for the Center for Technical Education. Some of you might know it as the Voc Ed uh, School, but it's no longer called that, and it's come a long way since then. Uh, the uh, CAD program has very strong support from the head of the CTE, um, who, Leo Di Simone, who I hope will be here tonight speaking to you. Daniel um, Bendel, he teaches the students about architectural history, and he uses material from um, the photos that we give him, handouts um, with illustrated text, and he also goes out to each of the properties to do site visits to help the students in taking measurements and appreciate the surrounding streetscape that is often quite rich with the diversity of architecture. And the material that we give them, we try to relate to the city itself and what the students might be seeing every day, but perhaps are not noticing without a trained eye. Now, lots of times you just walk down the street and you're just oblivious to these things. Students are the same way. So as many of you know, we are really blessed here in Somerville. Um, because we have an eclectic collection of architectural styles and historical condition, traditions. Fourteen years ago, we decided to expand the program to involve another department at Somerville High School, and that's the art department. Um, the prior head of that department was uh, Dr. Elaine McMichaels, and she, as a Somerville native, uh, fully embraced the program and encouraged all of her teachers to participate as one of many projects that the art students did um, during this winter and spring semester. When Elaine retired, uh, Lucy Prodwick took over, and she became the supervisor of visual arts for all of the grades in the city, from kindergarten through high school. 
and Lucy has also encouraged her high school teachers and students to participate in her program, uh, giving them an opportunity to draw one of the award-winning historic properties. And this year, I'm very excited to announce that we've added another dimension to the program, and we have expanded it to include um, Fabville. And for those of you that have no idea what Fabville is, shame on you, um, but we'll have um, Jerry come up and tell you a little bit more about that. So as a result, we have a good number of students and teachers involved um, from the Somerville High School Department. Um, and you'll be hearing briefly from Daniel from the CAD program, as well as I think from Lucy, um, who is not here yet, but we're hopefully will be, as well as the head of the Center for Technical Education, Leo Simone. And I've asked each of them to give you a little bit of a perspective on the value that this program has um, to their high school students. In December, the commission establishes an awards subcommittee that seeks out property nominations and then reviews them. And then in January, this, the committee makes site visits to a wide selection of nominated properties throughout the city. It's usually the coldest day of the year. <laughs> um, it's wonderful to see how many people have actually um, done quite a bit of research um, and put physical labor into their houses. Um, it's also very encouraging to find out how many neighbors are actually pleased and inspired by the work that you guys do, and in some cases have nominated you for this award tonight. The award subcommittee selects a handful of properties for either a director or a preservation award, usually six of each. And the staff takes photographs of each of these houses and gives them to the CAD instructor and to each of the art teachers. And the students then use these photographs, um, often supplemented by individual site visits, uh, to create the original art that you will see um, here tonight and for the property that they actually choose to work on. So just a little bit of explanation about the two different types of awards tonight. There's the preservation awards, which are given to designated historic houses, and they are created by the art students. And they use different techniques to recreate the house depending on what type of art class that they're taking. It could be architectural drawing, or computer art, photography, watercolor, or a ceramics class. And this year, um, we actually benefited from three different types of mediums being used, as I'm sure that you've noticed over there on the table. And that's the advanced architectural drawing class, digital photography, and ceramics. Um, so I, I hope you had a chance to look at all the, the variety. Uh, once the artwork is finished in the middle of April, the art teachers often select the top 10 to 15 pieces and the uh, commission's subcommittee um, actually chooses from those pieces the final drawings that will be given out tonight. And this year we had so many good choices um, that we ended up with a lot of honorable mentions. The second type of award is a director's award, and those are granted for houses that are considered of, of historic vintage, but have not actually been designated as historic under the city's ordinance. And for these awards, the CAD teacher, Daniel Bendel, chooses the students with the most experience, interest, and skill to work on the final CAD drawings for the property owners. And this year, we had so many great students in his class that they actually were able to draw almost all of the 14 properties, although all of them are not being given out tonight. Um, this curriculum on architectural rendering is greatly enhanced by Derek Snare, who is a local architect, and until this last summer was actually on the Preservation Commission. Um, he was here earlier tonight, checked them all out, and said, this is good, I can go home. <laughs> um, he prepares the handouts, and then he discusses them with the students, and so that they can gain more background um, about the different architectural styles and computer drawing techniques that they can use. For field experience, Daniel um, goes out with his class to visit a prototypical house on Prospect Hill. And on site, those students are able to learn how to take accurate measurements of each house's exterior and how best to capture those um, uh, observations on a drawing um, of that particular property. So once the drawings are completed um, by all of the art and CAD students, I take them to a local business and their professional staff uh, finds mats and frames for each of the 13 pieces that you see here tonight. And I am pleased to say that Stanhope Framers has once again uh, agreed to do all of the framing work at a substantial discount 
because otherwise we could never afford <laughs> the cost of this. Um, and in, incidentally, if you ever need to find a place to do some framing and such, I hope you'll think about them to go there. And they're right in Union Square in Somerville, and let them know how much you appreciate their generosity. Since no city or grant funds are currently available to us for this project, um, we have benefited as well from help by Century Bank. And this year, as they have done for the last 14 years, um, the bank has very generously contributed all of the funds that we needed to properly present the students' artwork to each of you property owners uh, tonight, as well as to you students for your portfolio. And Century Bank will be recognized later on in this ceremony, a little bit more formally. So, um, now you can see tonight how our ceremony is not the end of the awards program, um, but simply the culmination of many months of work by many people. And in fact, in a few weeks, the property photos and the artwork will be on display for many more people to enjoy. The exhibit will first be installed in the walls outside um, the Alderman's Chambers at City Hall, where it will be seen by hundreds, literally, of local officials and citizens who gather there regularly for school committee, planning board, aldermanic, and other civic meetings. And I don't need to tell anybody here, we have a lot of meetings at City Hall. Um, people visiting or working at City Hall regularly comment to the Preservation Commission staff about how impressed they are with the quality of the work that's done by you property owners as well as the students at Somerville High and how they are inspired to do work on their own properties as a result. And that is one of the major goals of this program. After this, the exhibit will travel to another venue, and which is likely to be the cafe here at the Somerville Armory. And if you haven't been in there already, it's a wonderful place, not only to view the artwork um, on the walls, but also to enjoy excellent food and drinks, and often accompanied by local performers, speakers, or musicians. Um, we also expect that Century Bank will display the artwork as they do every year in their Somerville branch on Fells Way West. And this introduces their patrons to some of the wonderful work being done um, in the, on Somerville properties, some of which they might have financed, I don't know. <laughs> Um, and we are pleased to note that the recently opened new cafe, which is on Washington Street in Union Square, has agreed to donate one of their walls to display the exhibit of last year's, the very last time it will be up as a mobile exhibit, on their walls there. So before it leaves with, um, another week or so, you can check it out there. Also be aware that the, tonight's ceremony and the exhibit are being videotaped um, for cable television. And I want to personally thank them for their annual participation. Um, the PowerPoint presentation that will follow um, will also be on the city's website. And you can see it there. Um, we actually have two websites. We have the new one, and then we have what they call the archival one, which is rather appropriately where some of our stuff is, I guess. Um, so anyway, in this way, we feel that people um, throughout the community can find out what type of preservation work is actually occurring in Somerville and can be proud to be members of such an active and hard-working community. Um, finally, I want to alert you to one last way that we um, have this program um, recognized throughout the community, and that's a series of articles that actually get printed in the Somerville Journal and the Somerville News Weekly. And this is done um, with the help of a local resident who is a mother and works part-time in the Somerville after-school program. And she's actually already been out and interviewed a number of you um, for uh, the articles that will be appearing. Uh, is Marion Berkowitz still here? Ah, stand up, please. Thank you. <laughs> Marion has been doing this for um, six years now, and um, we love her for doing it and going out and making the time and finding the time with all of you who are busy lives. But she also says how much she enjoys doing this because it really both inspires and excites her to see the kind of work that's being done. So thank you, Marion. Um, so in sum, these are um, the ways that we think that our particular um, awards program in Somerville is both different from and more encompassing than any of the other communities that might do this. It integrates community-based learning and teaching with community reinvestment and pride, and it reaches out to lots of different people with different backgrounds and different perspectives. So I'd now like to introduce, um, actually I, I'm gonna change the program a little bit because um, we have the benefit tonight 
of the mayor of the city of Somerville is here tonight. And it's not only memorable that he's here, he always tries to come every year, but there's a board of aldermen's meeting tonight he has to appear at, but he's also not feeling great. So <laughs> this is a very special opportunity for him to be here tonight. So I want him to come up now and say a few words. Thanks, Brandon. Well, good evening. Come on, we're at a historic preservation ceremony. It's a ceremony. Good evening. Well, uh, thank you, and it's great to be here with all of you. I'm fortunate I could come tonight. I've had to miss the last couple of the schedule. Around this time of year, it's always complex. Um, and tonight, these, uh, I apologize in advance. I have to go to a Board of Aldermen meeting and engage in some important um, legislative work that is occurring. But I did want to take a moment just to come down and one congratulate all the award recipients and thank you. Uh, thank you for making an investment not just in your property and its value but in the values of this community. Um, when we're advancing historic preservation we're investing in, in really the soul and fabric of our identity as neighborhoods and as one community. And there have been many people who advanced this cause over the years so I do want to take uh, a moment and give special thanks and join me in thanking every member of the Historic Preservation Commission for the incredible work they do. Um, people like Brandon Wilson and, and, and Abby and Dick Bauer and Christie and uh, many, many more. Um, to give you some perspective and context, uh, Brandon's been serving the city now well over three decades. I'm not trying to time you, Brandon, but you've served many mayors and, and, and Dick Bauer as well. Um, you know, I was at a ceremony with them and others uh, this morning to cut the ribbon on the community path uh, resurfacing, which we use Community Preservation Act monies. Together they worked collectively with activists and advocates around this city a few years ago to pass question four, which was the CPA, which passed by 76% margin, the second highest in the Commonwealth's history. And day in, day out for years, these folks have fought to preserve this community's, advance this community's historic identity from events like this, uh, to Paul Revere's ride, to the raising the Grand Union flag, uh, you name it, they've, been there, they've dedicated themselves and their lives. I, as one resident, would like to thank them. Please join me. <clears throat> um, and before we get to the actual award recipients, uh, I do want to give special thanks to all the students, some who I know, um, who participated uh, as they do annually and really speaks to the talent that some of the high school in the CAD program and in the arts department, uh, um, you know, led by Daniel Mendel and the uh, CAD instructor at the, at the vocational wing at the CTE program at some of the high and Dr. Prodzik in the arts department. Um, we have incredibly uh, creative uh, uh, students do, doing original things uh, and their talent is on display tonight. So special thanks for all of them for the work you do. Congratulations. <laughs> Once again, thank you for coming out. Thank you, and congratulations and my commendations to all the award recipients. Brandon? Do you want me to mention the pin? Oh, one of the things I was charged to mention tonight um, is you'll, all the award recipients will receive a, this is some of those 175th anniversary. Uh, 175 years ago, we broke away from Charlestown because they were becoming too urban. <laughs> and, to, and, to, and, and this year, we celebrate 175 years of, uh, uh, of the model that municipal freedom gives national strength. Um, and all throughout the year, we'll have in special occasions, we celebrate our historic identity. I was wearing one of these pins, so don't think I'm a hypocrite, uh, except Colby and Sarah Swetberg stole mine. But you'll all be getting one tonight. So please wear it with pride on our behalf. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Without the Mayor Curtitone, this program would not exist, and um, he's been very supportive for many, many years of this, and so thank you again for coming. Um, I want to actually have the next speaker um, to be Jeremy Shaw, which I just noticed is not actually on the program, and that's a total oversight, um, because I'm very excited that he is part of this program this year. So, Jeremy, you get first opportunity to come up and tell us a little bit about um, Fabville, which is a totally new program here in Somerville that we're very proud of and is a result of many state grants. So, come tell us about it and your students. Um, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here tonight and uh, representing Fabville, uh, which is the fabrication lab at Somerville High School. We're brand new this year. Um, if any of you 
aren't aware of what a fab lab is, basically it's a um, location where people in the public as well as students during the day can go uh, work on any sort of projects. We have 3D printers, laser engravers, uh, CNC machines. So it's basically a space where you could work on any sort of engineering products, uh, creative artistic products. What we were able to do this year um, when Brennan approached us is, if you take a look over there, all the laser engraved wood burnings, we were able to have our students go through, take all the photos that were taken, um, and basically Photoshop them, touch them up, make them look really nice, and put them through our laser engraver and create all the artwork that you see up over there. Um, if anyone in the public is ever um, interested in actually coming to Fabville, Fab Lab, um, we're open throughout the school year, usually from about 3.30 till 8 p.m. for the general public. We have classes, um, if you want to just come in and learn how to use any of the machines, if you've never 3D printed before, laser engraved, uh, come on by. You can always check out our website at fabville.net and that has all our information. Thanks. Yes, it's a wonderful community resource. So not only do you have the benefit of the students tonight that are um, presenting you with um, one of their uh, laser-cut wood carvings, um, but you can also go in there and use the equipment yourself and find out about it. So um, we're very fortunate to be one of the communities in the state that actually receive this equipment. Um, uh, I now would like to ask Daniel Bendel um, to come up, um, who was the instructor for the CAD program, and tell us about the value of this program as, and his students. Okay, good evening. Uh, my name is Dan Bendel, and I teach the drafting or CAD program over at Somerville High in the CTE uh, department. Um, I would like to thank Brandon and the commission tonight, and also all the other owners, uh, and also the mayor for his kind words about the program. Um, this is my fifth year doing this program, and it was made all the more easier by probably one of the best and brightest groups of students that I've ever had, and that's easy for me to say. Um, so I'd really like to spend my time up here thanking them. They worked really hard for about two months on this project, and it all started on probably a, kind of a day like it is outside. What you don't see um, after, well, after, you'll see all their good work tonight, but what you don't see is when they had to go out and take these measurements in the pouring rain with umbrellas, uh, taking pictures, taking measurements of the houses, kind of jumping out, getting all the things they needed to do these drawings, and then kind of huddling back up onto the van and warming up each time for all 11 houses that they had to do. So they did that with little to no complaining, so I have to thank them here tonight. That's something that kind of goes uh, unseen when on the final product. Um, so thank you, yeah. Also, it's always great to see that they get to do something for their community. We do a lot of projects uh, over usually what the three-year career they have in the shop of drafting. Um, this is one where they actually get to tie into something real from Somerville, get to learn a little bit about something in the city that they wouldn't have otherwise. Um, and I think it's a great opportunity for them to get out there, learn a little bit of the measuring techniques, and then take them back and work hard um, on their project. And one other thing that happens, lastly, is that they do many different drafts of these, of these um, products that you see over here on my right. Um, but we don't accept the first draft, we work hard, we mark them up, we don't ex we accept nothing but perfection on these drawings, so they were patient as they went through this process, and again, all my thanks to them for the wonderful job that they did. All right. Thank you. Okay, so now I'd just like to introduce um, two of the key people um, that are responsible for making this event possible. And that is the chairman of the commission, Dick Bauer, and um, the w previous vice chair, Abby Friedman. Um, Dick and Abby have both served in that capacity for eight years, and Dick has just been reelected by his colleagues to the position yet again. So we're delighted for the ninth year. Um, Incidentally, both Dick and his wife, Roberta, who I believe is here tonight, um, and Abby and her husband, Dick, Lori, um, have actually won a director's award um, from the commission many years ago for the work that they did on their individual properties as well. Um, so if you're wondering, this is uh, one of the key ways that we actually recruit new members to the commission. <laughs> so beware. <laughs> so Abby, you're going to come up and...
Okay, so we're now going to start the PowerPoint presentations, and we're going to show off your properties, um, and as well as the artwork done by the students. So as you can see, we have special thanks to be given to a number of the people that actually um, have made this uh, program possible. As I said, it's pretty much all a volunteer program, um, and for that we're very appreciative. In particular, I hope you'll notice in the program as, um, as well that, in fact, a number of the local businesses are really um, stepped up to the plate and been very generous in their support. And I might mention that um, for those of you that were wondering where the Red Bones barbecue is tonight, <laughs> Um, especially the high school students I know. Um, they're not here because they had a uh, fire in their kitchen, um, a significant one on Wednesday, and called to say, you know what, our kitchen is closed until at least Friday. So um, we send our best wishes to them to recover quickly from Memorial Day weekend. Um, and I'm happy to say that the Mount Vernon restaurant, Brett Henry in particular, um, as the owner has stepped up to the plate and gone above and beyond and provided a good deal of the food here tonight. So thank you. I hope everybody will. <laughs> we'll go to the Mount Vernon, which is in East Somerville. Um, and also to the culinary arts. I don't know if you know, but the Somerville High School, as part of its CTE program, has a culinary arts program to train students how to be entrepreneurs in the food business, and they do a fabulous job, and one of the things they do is very much a practical one. They have a, a Highlander Cafe where they serve food, and they obviously make it there as well and serve it, and so the head of the program um, is here tonight um, as well, and I'd like to thank you, Jeffrey Stewart, who is here with a boot on his foot because he broke it, <laughs> but he's here anyway tonight, um, and for the food contributions that they made as well. So we're going to start with the um, Director's Awards, and just a reminder, those are the properties that are not historically designated, but are older properties. And so we're going to ask, in each case, for the property owner to come up here, um, and if they're willing to share some of their insights, experiences, uh, nightmares that <laughs> about what it took to do their project. We're also going to ask the student who did the drawing to come up as well to be publicly recognized um, and to meet the owner. Um, the good news is um, for the, um, all of you is that you are winning an award tonight and you will get a drawing. The bad news is that you're not actually going to get it tonight, <laughs> the property owners. Um, and the reason for that is we can't have a mobile exhibit to show them off unless we have the drawings. So the students will be receiving the drawing tonight. We have two copies of everything. Um, but the owners will have to have delayed gratification. <laughs> Um, we do have some other things for you instead to sort of offset that, but thank you very much for your patience. Okay, so we're going to start um, 63 Boston Street. Are oh, David and Renee Scott here? Why don't you guys come on up? So I want everybody to take a look at the, the house. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about the architecture in some of these houses as we go through. Uh, if you'd been in Somerville 200 years ago, it was basically a farming community, and there weren't all that many houses. Most of Somerville grew up between the Civil War and World War I. Um, there are a lot of styles that were common during that period. Some of them came in waves. Um, and one of them is a style that we call Queen Anne, which is what this house is. Um, a lot of Somerville um, are houses that are basically all have kind of the same bones, fairly plain, kind of like little Greek temples, and they're kind of evolutions from um, Greek revival houses with a little bit of other detailing put on the outside. That's what my house is like. This one is a true Queen Anne, and in Queen Anne houses we see asymmetry, you can see how different the two sides of the houses are. You can see, you often see towers. You see lots of fanciful details. All of that is here on this house. But a lot of it was covered up, as you can see in the before picture. So folks stripped it off. We have the next slide. 
there was a lot of during. Okay. Yep, one more slide. And that's what it looks like now. You can imagine what life was like living through all of this, uh, but you don't have to imagine it because you're here and we're gonna ask you to tell us what was this like going through all this and tell us about the project and uh, we don't have to tell you how spectacular it is all completed. Okay. Okay. I was going to yep. hand you the microphone, but go ahead okay. and step right up to it. Um, well, uh, Renee and I moved to, Boston, uh, to Somerville in 1999, and we started looking for a house about 2002, and uh, it, it took us about three years, but when we found this house in 2005, we fell in love with it and moved in. So um, we've been kind of picking away at the house and trying to, to um, restore it to you know, its former uh, beauty and state. And it took us a while to get around to doing this project. Um, but yeah, when we took the vinyl siding off, we found a lot of surprises. Um, years and years of dead squirrels came out of um, some of the, um, the awnings. Um, but um, yeah, what you see is, is uh, how it ended up with, and we're very pleased. Um, we had some, a lot of help from Eric Parks, who consulted on the project. Attila Piltman was our contractor, and Kevin Jackson, um, put the finishing touches on. You can see the the round, um, unfinished wood uh, uh, moldings on the outside, as well as the looks like wainscoting on the turret. Um, there was the wainscoting was completely destroyed underneath the vinyl siding, so we ended up copying the wainscoting that we found on the um, first floor in the dining room to um, make that design. So yeah, it was a little bit to live through, but we're glad we did it. How long did this go on for? Nine, nine months? Yeah, nine months or so. Renee, do you have, want to add anything? Okay. I want to add something. <laughs> um, some of you might know who David Scott is um, if you come to our flag raising ceremony each year um, on Prospect Hill. Um, as he said, this is they live on Prospect Hill, and he is an instructor uh, or teacher at Berkeley School of Music. So he is the one that leads the singing oftentimes at the ceremony there in whatever awful weather we might have on January 1st. So again, thank you for that. Um, Renee is a photographer as well in the local community and does a lot of things um, with, the, um, with their photography skills. So this has been a labor of love, um, and you did a great job. So thank you so much. And they also have a couple of children who actually made it even more interesting, I'm sure, who are sitting in the audience very shyly over there, but very well behaved. So <laughs> thank you again for your patience. So for everybody here tonight, um, we have... Um, two things, actually three things. Um, we have a certificate from the Preservation Commission, and I'm only going to read it out once. So, Mayor, Mayor Joseph A. Curtitone and the Somerville Historic Preservation Commission um, are giving you a 2017 Director's Award to David and Renee Scott for outstanding work on 63 Boston Street, May 25th, 2017. And the certificate is signed by myself, Dick Bauer, and of course, the Mayor. <laughs> So again, thank you very much. Um, on the certificate, you'll see um, for ever more posterity to the students, the CAD drawings that were done of each of these properties as well. So even more special. So thank you. Great, thank you very much. In addition, no, that's not it. <laughs> that's from the city's part. Um, we also have um, Senator Jalen, um, who I hope you all know represents Somerville ably at the State House. Uh, she each year for innumerable years has been giving out an official citation um, from the State House, and that reads, be it known that the Massachusetts Senate hereby extends its congratulations to, and in this case it's Renee and David Scott, in recognition of receiving a 2007 Preservation Award from the Somerville Historic Preservation Commission for the repairs and restoration of the house. And be it further known that the Massachusetts Senate extends best wishes for continued success, that the citation be duly signed by the President of the Senate and attested to and a copy thereof transmitted by the Clerk of the Senate. And then it's signed by the President of the Senate, the Clerk of the Senate, and of course the State Senator Jalen. So um, because of a little bit of a miscommunication this year, the citations are not available here tonight, but she will be sending them directly from her office to you. Um, and they're rather large. 
they look like this. <laughs> They're very official looking. And so each of you as property owners or students will get one of these as well. And if you didn't already pick one up when you came in um, tonight, the mayor has indicated before that you will get one of the special pins that we had made up to celebrate the city's 175th anniversary. So did you get yours yet? Okay, then you don't get more. <laughs> um, also, if you didn't notice when you came in, um, for those of you that are willing to use it or you have children that would love to, we have temporary tattoos celebrating the 175th anniversary. And they are indeed temporary. Don't worry, you can get them off pretty quickly, but they're kind of fun. So you can take one of those on your way out tonight if you'd like. And then lastly, as I said, um, we have for each of the property owners tonight a uh, laser cut wood engraving of your property taken from a photograph that was done by Fabville uh, students. They did a fabulous job. So they're all on display over here. So before you leave tonight, you may take not only the award, but also the special um, display piece that they made up again with the laser equipment there as well, very creatively done. So be sure and take that with you tonight. And then as I promised before, you'll get your award, <laughs> the drawing in another year from now. So thank you again. Great. Thanks, Brenda. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Now, before, before you leave, no, I, one more bit. We need to have the student come up. Okay, now we're going to ask you if you have any comments to make about this wonderful drawing that you did and how much work it was. <laughs> All right. Um, I had a lot of fun with this drawing. Um, one of the most interesting things for me was drawing the roof. Uh, I had to use Google Maps and some street views to figure it out. As you can see, it's, it's slightly complex, so it's different from the other drawings I've done. I really enjoyed that. Yeah. Oh. The point. good news is you get, <laughs> whoops, yeah, that's right. <laughs> you get a citation and you get your drawing framed and matted for your portfolio. So thank you. And okay. so, so Gabe, what year are you in school? I'm a junior. Okay, so you're going to be back for this next year? Uh, we hope. Yeah, most likely. I'll still be in drafting. Okay. So we'll see if I'm Great. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll look forward to it. Thank you so much. You. Okay, and thank you folks Great. so much. The next property is uh, 120 Central Street. Come up. And the owners of this property. What happened to the program that was here? It's me, I swear. No, 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 I need the program because I want to introduce you properly. Oh, it is John Murphy? That's me, and this is my partner, John Berrigan. Good. We actually don't live in the house, we we're developers. But I live in Somerville, and I actually have a house that's on the historic register. Mm -hmm. And so we, we bought this and restored it. It's our what was it, 13th house. We only buy houses this age. It's our 13th house in Somerville. Thank you. It's our 13th house in Somerville. And uh, it was, you know, there was no place to go but up. So we looked in the, the building records and found that it had been sided the stonework and there's a bumped out entry and the aluminum siding was done in 68 right after the big fire at what is now the uh, Vernon Street Studios. And uh, when we got the front, we generally have, can afford to do the scene faces. And when we got the front of that off, it was, it was fairly evident what needed to happen to it. Next slide. There we go. There's there. We can, yeah, there's... There's, we could find the shadows from the bottom, the bottom story window heads and the upper frieze, and uh, we knocked the porch back to what it was. We found all the shadows for that stuff as well. And that's it. It took us a year, and we sold it to some friends who had lived around the corner at 425 Medford that we had sold one of our projects to six or seven years before, and this was the next step for them. And... Yeah, it's a terrific house. So, yeah, this is a second empire house. Um, it's based on a style that was very popular in France in the 1860s when Paris was um, basically redeveloped. And um, the 
one of the purposes of the style was to um, um, use more room on the third story. And so that's why the roofs are shaped the way they are instead of peaked. They have the slope, so the upper story rooms are larger. And uh, yeah. so... Yeah, it was a tax dodge. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you, it's you, still a two and a half story house. It's a two, it's in Paris, you only but, paid taxes for the floors that weren't a roof. Yeah. Louis Mansart should have got a big award for that. Yeah. And um, my own house is the same style. In fact, I suspect it's the same builder, probably originally. And um, I had just, I, I, a few years after we bought our house, I went to France on a trip. And there was, you know, all these mansard roofed houses in Paris. And I came back, and it was just so wonderful. I felt like I was still in France. So all of you who have houses in this style, you can think of them as being very Parisian. So you did a great job, and so glad Thanks. that um, here's a, you're a wonderful developer. Thank you very much That's for not, being no. very sensitive to the historic origins and the way, and for bringing this house back to life and the way it really ought to look. You no. did a really great job. No, it's very satisfying for us too. We drive by it, you know. I drive by it every day in my life. So, like, I'm going to do a crummy job on it. You know. <laughs> Well, <laughs> not all developers no, all right. are like that, no, you know, unfortunately. No. So I think, no, thank you for doing justice to the house. No, thank, you. thank you very much. Right. And uh, wait, wait, wait. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, is, this is a better one. Um, okay, so now we need to have, is a Andrew Atherton here tonight? Is he one of the ones that wasn't able to make it? Okay, so he's not here. So Andrew Atherton um, has done a wonderful rendition of it, which we want to show. And so we will give you Beautiful. Thank you. Um, also, did, did you take a um, pin yet? No. No. And you both get a pin. All right. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. You'll get the certificate from Senator Jalen. Um, I'd also just like to comment that um, John Murphy and, and company, I guess I should say, um, yes, as he said, owns the historic house in Somerville, which they've done a lot of work on and done a great job, um, has been um, wonderful in a lot of the restoration work he's done in Somerville. He's been nominated a number of times for different awards or for different properties that he's worked on, as he said, one a year. Um, and we're very pleased that we were able to give you an award for this one. So thank you very much. And I know a lot of time was spent on this, and one of your um, uh, helpers, I guess, or assistants on this spent a lot of time actually recreating um, all of the details on some of these um, windows and, and corners. like a pack horse. <laughs> <laughs> <That's right. laughs> so not only was it a very instructive for the owners, but also for some of your team members. And so it's, it's great to see those skills passed on, because you did a great job. So thank you so much. Thanks, Looking at this house, now you know this is another Queen Anne house. You can see the uh, asymmetry in the house, although not as extreme and no towers on this one, and another characteristic that's common to Queen Anne's is a variation in the surface treatment. And so if you look closely, it's hard to see in the original photos, but you'll see when you get to the uh, completed photos, uh, a lot of interesting uh, shingle work here, not simply a set of cedar shingles, but a lot of interesting detail in the shingle work as well. We have uh, Abigail Taylor and Jeffrey Curley come up. They are not here. Okay. So we don't get to ask them about what life was like living through it, and we'll just have to look at the pictures and imagine. You can see also uh, what an elegant paint job can do to set off the rest of the work that was done in a house. Is Melina Pimentel here? Come on up. Melina did the drawing of it. So, Melina, what year are you in school? Junior. Junior, okay, so we're gonna get you back next year, I hope, right? Okay, okay. tell us about working on this picture. Come on over by the mic, or, or take this one, whichever you'd like. Um, my favorite part about this project was translating all the raw measurements into something that I could kind of create into my own, not my own, but like represent the drawing accurately. And I just, I really enjoyed the whole thing. 
it was all great. What was it like? I want to ask particularly doing doing the shingles on this. Because I, I the shingles were very tedious. It was very tedious work, but it was worth it in the end. It was very it's like satisfying. You had to do every shingle separately. Is that what it was like? It's what it looks like. Um, it was more or less. It was like that. Yeah. Um, really nice. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I also want to mention, um, while we're looking at this PowerPoint presentation, that I want to give credit, do credit, um, to the most wonderful intern that I've had in a really long time, um, which is Lubov um, over here. That um, <laughs> a round of applause for. <laughs> I know she wrote to many of you in order to get some extra photos and such befores and, and during. So thank you very much for um, providing those today. Um, I also want to mention that um, before you leave tonight, to be sure and take um, the laser cut uh, drawing tonight, the property owners as well. Um, and also, the, I didn't mention, I don't think, the ceramic tiles, of which we have quite an assortment. The students get to choose which house that they want to work on. And interestingly, this year, there were three houses that seemed to uh, entice the most interest. <laughs> so there's a little bit of a challenge for you to go and figure out which tile might be yours. but. Um, we are um, asking the students if they're really um, taken with their particular tile and are going to take them home or whether they would just assume allow you to have one. So we'll let you know if that's the case. And in addition to that, because we have so many honorable mentions this year, um, we actually can make available to you a scanned version of the honorable mention drawings as well um, because, um, again, uh, several of the properties enticed a number of, of students to do them as well. And they're, um, it was a hard choice this year which one we chose. So if you're interested, please let us know. So the next property is um, 215 Morrison Avenue. And could Bonnie Walsh and Celia Halstead come up, please? This, um, again, is another mansard-roofed cottage. And um, Somerville has a number of these wonderful, charming Second Empire cottages, and this is one of them. And um, it's just wonderful to see them come back cottage by cottage. So thank you. You want to tell us about your project? Well, um, I was driving in Somerville one day. Actually, I was working. And all of a sudden, I drove by this house that had a for sale sign on it. And I sort of stopped. And anyway, as it turned out, um, after a number of months, we ended up buying it. And that was about 17 years ago. And it's right oh. there. All right. So we may be very slow workers, but <laughs> it took us about, and we're still working on it. Yeah, if, yes. we, if, if, uh, if we had during pictures, there would probably be about 100 during pictures up there because we've been working on it for 17 years, and it's still not done. So. Well, the exterior at this point is fairly much done. In fact, the back deck and the arbor, et cetera, we all already have to have replaced <laughs> since that was one of the first things that went up. But um, the reason it seemed to take us so long was um, because, we, first of all, we started on the inside so that we could move in, and we actually had the entire interior of the house pretty much gutted. And um, so I think that took us about a year or two. A year so that we could move in. And um, then um, we started thinking about the outside, and we were able to find an architect that um, we could work with. And we had been looking at so many houses that were you know, of this style that we've been really thinking about every single detail. And we talked to him about what we wanted. And, um, so we, we finally worked it out. We, uh, oh, I see there's the back porch up there, too. We started with the back porch, which is over to the right, and um, which was just like a little set of stairs going up. And then just recently we finished the front porch and got the whole place painted. But um, it has been really an ongoing project, you know, getting the new windows, first in the first floor and then upstairs, and 
you have anything that you say? Um, just to mention, the architect was uh, Charles Dumond of Momentum Architecture in uh, Cambridge. Um, but we also did a lot of, and he did a lot of consultation with John Moriarty, who has a, mm -hmm. a, an amazing um, architectural woodworking shop um, right down the street from us. So, so, so we've, it happens. We've walked <laughs> over there and watched things getting made. Yeah. Um, and he's a great resource for any kind of architectural detail that you're trying to do exterior or interior. He really is fabulous, he's, and he's quite a character. And We've enjoyed working with him a lot. Yep. So, um, could you just? Look, I want to just show the amazing difference between. I want. I want to just show the amazing, amazing difference between the before and after. So let's just take another look. Here's the before. Okay, go to the after now. And this really shows, like, when you take siding, aluminum siding or vinyl siding off of a house, and you start really paying attention to those original details. What a difference those 17 years made, yes, right? And Especially, I love your recreation of the porch. It's just beautiful. And well, there was no porch. It's I mean, it was right. a little <laughs> right. shadow. I mean, the top. this is exactly the way the porch. This is just what the. This is just the way the porch would have looked, and you've just done a wonderful job with it. Thank you so much. Well, we're, we weren't exactly. Um, we hadn't done much of this before, so I can assure you it took us a long, 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 long time to figure out those various angles. And I should also mention, we had a false start. We, we actually had another front porch on there before, but the dimensions just weren't quite right. Uh. So we had to take it off and kind of shrink it down just a little bit so that it fit better with, with the house. You know, it's kind of like a, you know, a nose on a face. It, it's got a it's got to be right, and so with John Moriarty's help, we I think finally got the dimensions it's right. Really, it's really beautiful, yeah. very charming. Thank you. Yes, thank, thank you very you. much. Don't leave. <laughs> this does not work for you. So we're going to give you your award. <laughs> um, and also, is Thomas Marshall here tonight? Excellent. Um, I also want to point out that um, for those of you that might have um, been watching the Preservation Awards for several years, Morrison Avenue has gotten more than its fair share of awards in the last uh, couple of years, which is exactly one of the reasons why we love this program and giving recognition, because I think one um, property owner doing this kind of work inspires others. And so this is like the fourth one on this street. Um, there's a bed and breakfast um, that actually um, got an award several years ago. They did so well and so successful, they bought another property and converted that to a bed and breakfast as well. And now you and one other property owner tonight will be getting one. So Morrison Avenue has benefited humongously from and all. And we're right together. And you're all together, yes. And strangely enough, you're a part of a local historic district now. <laughs> so again, um, this is one of the, the missions of the program as well, is to hopefully get other people to see what the difference it can make. So so thank you again for a further inspiration on the street. Thank you. Did you get a, a And then you're going to meet, stay here when you meet. So come up here, Thomas. Hi. This is Thomas Hello. Marshall, the artist here. Are you can I speak into the microphone? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, go ahead. yeah, so um, I remember like the first day Mr. Bendel was going down like the list of houses and I took the one on Boston Street because that's the street I lived on. But then I saw this pink house and I loved it. I don't know why, I just had to have it. And it was, um, <laughs> it, was it was pretty fun. I like doing it. The, oh, sorry. The, um, the porch was kind of hard. The, like the top of the windows were hard, but uh, in the end it was worth it and I like it. It's cool. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, wow. Good insight. One more. Did you get one of these yet? Oh, no. Oh, that's you. Thank you. <laughs> Next up is a little building that we've described as a worker's cottage. It's a really pretty vernacular style. Underneath it, it's probably sort of late vernacular Georgian uh, with the long side facing the street and otherwise just not much detail, which is characteristic generally. Um, even of high style Georgian and certainly of a vernacular building like this. Uh, this building dates from about 1840 and it almost got lost. Uh, if you look at the before, during, and after pictures, you will see that the, the tall white building on the right hand side seems to have moved back 
alongside the little building. But in fact, it's the little building that moved up to the front. This came to us originally as a proposed demolition. Uh, part of our job on the Historic Preservation Commission is to review proposed demolitions. Um, and under the demolition review ordinance, we get to look at them, we get to try and work with the owners, but unfortunately, more often than not, we are not successful in saving the buildings. We would like to see a stronger ordinance, and in fact, there's a public meeting going on tonight um, for the public to give input on our proposed stronger ordinance. But in any case, under the existing ordinance, what we have, uh, our tools are somewhat limited, uh, but this case, fortunately, there was a happy ending to it. Uh, we proposed to the owner that rather than demolishing the building, that they bring it up to the front and make it the centerpiece of the development, and that left enough room to put a big development alongside and behind it. And so the building got saved, and as you can see, it's now been restored and it's pretty spectacular. So I want to ask Tom Tuton to come up. So when I say vernacular, what I really mean is sort of general, normal, plain, every day without all of the fancy gigawatts um, on it. So, um, for example, some of the Queen Anne houses we saw have towers. Some of them don't have towers. Some of them have fancy woodwork. Some of them don't have so much fancy woodwork. We sort of start paring that down. Um, you end up with what we might call vernacular, which is sort of plain, every day um, kinds of buildings and and typically, um, to the extent that they have come some kind of style, it's been, imp it's been literally sort of pasted on or painted on to a basic structure that might have been there in a previous style, or a style before that, or a style before that. Uh, it's as if you had a Volkswagen Beetle, but one year you made the, put fancy headlight covers on it, and one year, and called it the, the G model, and one year you put fancy bumpers on, and called it the H model, but underneath, it's still a Volkswagen Beetle. My house is like that. It's a basic, simple frame house with a peaked roof that is functionally not any different than it would have been 50 years earlier, but 50 years earlier, it would have been styled as a Greek revival. 25 years earlier, it would have had Italianette styling applied to it. It was built in 1889, and it has kind of Queen Anne styling. Uh, when we, some of the houses, like your house, which we'll come to later, are, are real serious pieces of, of high style work where the stuff isn't just painted on the outside or applied on the outside, it's really built into the structure of it. Um, and so a, a fancy Georgian building might have fancy coins in the corner, fancy detailing, an, um, a, uh, a lunette window, and a, a moon-shaped window over there, all kinds of fancy stuff. This one, as you can see, is just basic plain house. Um, and, um, and there's a lot of basic plain house in Somerville, and it's part of our heritage and part of what we want to preserve, and we were glad to be able to preserve it uh, in this building. How about Stephen Sampson? Is Stephen Sampson here? Okay. Stephen has done the, the graphics. Could come on up. Oh. oh, I'm sorry. I only had one name on it. Okay. Attila Javar or Keith Glover? No. Okay. So, Stephen, come on over and tell us about working on this project. Um, oh, into the mic, or I'll give you a hand mic. I liked how. I could build it from nothing, like I just had the measurements and then it was just a blank screen and then it ended up being this. Were there any, any special challenges in doing it? Um, not really. This house is pretty simple. Uh -huh. what, year? what year are you in school? Oh, I'm a senior. Uh -huh. So what are your plans for next year? Uh, I'm actually going to Wentworth. Okay, great. And doing. So that makes me think you're going to be doing more of this kind yeah, of work. I'm actually going to major in architectural design. Okay. Well, great. Did this, was this one of the things that inspired you to do that? Yeah. Okay. Well, great. Well, we're, we're so happy to be part of that, and we're looking forward to seeing great things from you. We hope you come back Thank and join you. us in future years.
I just want to add to that for um, all of you probably um, live in Somerville will probably notice this, but Somerville Avenue has witnessed some of the most significant changes of all of the avenues, I think, in the city. Um, and this is one of the properties that I think will inspire even more um, property owners to do more work because it used to be one of those avenues that you didn't really relish going down, but between the street improvements and the house improvements, it's just a wonderful um, avenue to, to wander down now. So thank you to all of you for doing the work on this property. Uh, and I also um, want to add, um, this property dates from the 1840s, which is a little bit early for Somerville. We don't really have many properties from, I'd say, before 18... So before 1860, they get rarer and rarer. And um, so this house has this very nice kind of rural feel to it when Somerville was still not urbanized. It was kind of before the decades of urbanization in Somerville before. And um, so you can still feel that about this house. So we were very happy to save it since, since all, it's a simple house. It's like a country house. Um, but it's one of our earlier houses. So the, the next property is 83 Belmont Street, and the owners are Laura De La Torre Bueno and Haim Feldman. Would you like to come up, please? And this, this house is a mix of, I would say, Queen Anne and Colonial Revival, and um, And uh, come on up to the mic and tell us about your experiences. Well, um, we have lived in and loved this house for more than 20 years. The, the front of the microphone. The front of the microphone. Thank you. Uh, when someone's staying with us, neglected a candle, so we had a major fire. We were very, very lucky because we already knew Charlie Allen, who is right here, of Charlie Allen Renovations, and we knew that of anyone, he could restore it beautifully, and he did a fantastic job. So the exterior wasn't so damaged, but uh, we did lose a really lovely stained glass window, and thanks to the generosity of the Community Preservation Act, um, we got a grant to help us restore it, which Jim Anderson uh, stained glass did. And um, it's just, it's even nicer than ever now. We were able to restore some interior features, which I guess you won't see, that we would have liked to restore and didn't think we ever would be able to. Um, yeah, do you want to add something? Mm, I don't think so. <laughs> okay. So there, there's the stained glass window. Uh, one significant thing about this project, um, not only is it um, such a wonderful job and a labor of love after the fire, which is pretty devastating to begin with, um, but also that they received uh, money from, what the mayor mentioned this before, the CPA, the Community Preservation Act that the city um, in universally endorsed a couple of years ago. And that's been instrumental in helping um, some property owners that have applied to actually gain some extra funding in order to do the work. And this was an expensive project, and they did apply, and they received the funds. Um, and so the stained glass window was what um, that benefited from that. And of course, the rest of the house was up to them. But you did a fabulous job, and it's um, a wonderful treasure that you have there. Is there a photo of the, of the restored window? Yeah. Uh, yeah, um, I, if you keep... Next, next, next slide. slide. It's there, right there. Yeah, this is a, uh, the picture of the actual window that got restored because it was, um, it was broken, I think, in the fire? It's, it's it was destroyed. That's, destroyed. that's the original, and it was completely destroyed. Uh, Charlie Allen is here tonight as well, and Charlie Allen is very well known in the field for many, many years, so hopefully he'll come forth and share some insights about this house or his work in restoring a lot of properties both in Somerville and throughout the metropolitan Boston area. Um, all I really want to say tonight um, is how uh, richly deserved the award is um, for uh, what Hyam and Laura did. I've been doing this, um, I'm afraid to say, for 40 years. 
And I can count on the fingers of one hand the times we've been able to do our very best work, usually because people won't, can't um, uh, spend the money to do uh, everything the right way or simply don't have the passion to do it the right way. And Laura and um, Haim did it the right way and it was a joy uh, to bring the best of our company uh, to 83 Belmont Street. And uh, thank you, Laura and Haim, and hats off to the commission for recognizing that kind of uh, commitment to Somerville uh, old houses. Can I just say one thing about that? We should probably thank Ace Insurance. We should thank Ace Insurance, <laughs> and we should thank my friend Christy Johnson, who told me about, um, uh, what's it called? No, no, the uh, uh, replacement, replacement uh, insurance, which anybody who has a nice old house would be well advised to get because we could not have had Charlie do his best work had it not been for replacement insurance. Talk about the newspaper article. Oh, okay. Um, so the newspaper article, th that picture, uh, the drawing of the house was done by the original architect, Thomas M. James, who later became famous for doing bank buildings mainly. Um, he was at Somerville and the, the Colonial Theater, I think of the Colonial Theater downtown. He um, was a Somerville native and uh, this was his first house and it appeared on the front page of the Somerville Journal when it was built, apparently because so little was going on in Somerville then that <laughs> that's what they featured. So there it is. Thank you. We have a certificate for you, and I'd like to ask Jeremy Shaw to come up now, um, because Jeremy actually is uh, the instructor, as you well know, from the whole program. And um, because of the fact this was actually a late nomination for us, um, we decided that you get an extra large, um, actually, laser-cut dog. And Jeremy did it himself, because it was a complicated house. So, Jeremy? Yeah, this is one that, um, ooh, here we go. Uh, the students didn't have enough time to run through fall over. There we go. Um, and so we had a lot of issues. I mean, you can see up there we had trees in the way, and so we had to do some photoshopping with it. I actually had one student help me out with this, and I think we went through about three or four wood engravings before we had finally got it correct. So enjoy. Before you leave, Jeremy, you can also just comment on the different materials that you can use to do this, because we had a discussion about the different types of wood that you can make a different effect and such. You want to share that? Um, there we go. Sure. Um, so with the laser engravings, um, there we go. Put it in the right direction. Um, with the laser engravings, lots of materials you can do it with. Uh, you can use plastic, acrylic, uh, different types of wood. There are mainly three different types of wood that work really well. Um, the resin, so like the sap in it and everything, will give different uh, effects to it. This right here is just basswood, so you get a nice uh, kind of photo engraved with it. Um, you can use cherry, you can use birch. Uh, Baltic birch also works as well. Um, we could also do this on leather, all sorts of different materials, metal. Don't, don't disappear. Where you get you, all right? You get an award, too. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, oh, oh. <laughs> and, and also for the property owners, you are the only ones tonight that are actually getting your award here. So we're going to hand to you your uh, drawing. Um, when I lived there, uh, there was an ice cream store in Somerville called Steve's Ice Cream, and he used to live in that house. Oh, so you know. Well, what you in our house? Yeah. I think it was so Steve's. Oh, maybe it was Steve's. Can you say that louder? Because half of us didn't hear what you just said. So, so Steve's Ice Cream, uh, those of you who are young, was a Somerville fixture and was actually uh, one of those first, like, um, boutique ice cream places that did all your mix-ins right there while you watched. And then you said, 
the Cornelli brothers who started Bertucci's lived there while they were starting Bertucci's. So, no? <laughs> I want to say a few more words about the Community Preservation Act. Uh, the Historic Preservation Commission has a seat on the Community Preservation Committee which allocates funds under the Community Preservation Act and I have the honor of representing the Historic Preservation Commission on the Community Preservation Committee. And the first six houses, well the first, the first block of houses, including this one, are not in historic districts. That means that they are not subject normally to regulation by the Historic Preservation Commission. The next group that we're going to see after this are houses in historic districts and those we do supervise. But the Community Preservation Committee uh, has adopted a policy at the urging of the Historic Preservation Commission that whenever we grant funds for a historic preservation project, we require the owners to agree to a historic preservation restriction on the entire building. So although this house is not in an historic district, it is subject to a historic preservation restriction just as if it were in an historic district. Um, when Laura and Chaim applied to us for the money, we told them that would be one of the conditions, and their answer was, it's wonderful, we'd love to be subject to restrictions, because that means that the house is then preserved for all of us in the future of Somerville to enjoy. So thank you for letting us do that. Okay. Okay. So this way you got the status and a new window, out of, a replacement window out of it. Two for one. So we're now moving now into the preservation awards. These are awards to properties that are in historic districts. And the first one is 44 Meacham Road. And this one is, again, a Queen Anne, but a somewhat more vernacular Queen Anne. It does not have the fancy towers, it does not have all of the crazy roof lines, but it still has a symmetry. It has a lot of detailing around the shingles and the other woodwork. Um, and I want to ask Sarah and Colby Sweatberg to come on up. So, so tell us what it was like for you. Come on in front of the mic and tell us what it was like for you working on and living in this project. Uh, well, we are, are joined by our incredibly talented contractor, Nick Portnoy, and all the credit really goes to Nick for the amazing work that he did. Um, Nick is now famous in our neighborhood for climbing up on ladders and meticulously measuring sawtooth detail on neighbors' houses, uh, replicating corbels on, on nearby houses to make sure that all the architectural details were right on point. Um, so we are incredibly grateful to Nick and his talented team for doing the, the work that allowed us to earn this award. Um, we created a little bit of symmetry by adding a, another window uh, on that third floor. Um, Nick did a great job designing the front porch and really adding um, it back to its, its original beauty and sort of the, the traditional style that was associated with the house. Um, we're grateful to the Historic Commission for being uh, forward thinking and approving our request to use low E windows. It was very important to us to, to build this house in a way that was as green as possible. Um, and so using low E windows allowed us to preserve some of that um, more current uh, material build. And um, I think that's it that I can think of. I think we might make history for the longest meeting ever. So I don't want to keep you, but if Nick wants to add anything. I'd just like to thank um, Sarah and Paulby, who are just absolutely fantastic clients. Projects like this, uh, as many of you know, are just enormous undertakings, and there are always things that come up, and they were just so great every step of the way. So uh, my hat's off to you. Sarah, do you want to add anything? Um, I want to add a little something then um, about the windows that Colby mentioned. So when people come to us to do work, um, often we are, are trading off different considerations. Um, and one of the considerations is, um, do we want to 
push more in the direction of historically appropriate windows? Do we want to push more in the direction of, um, of more energy efficient windows? And there are trade-offs there. And, and our usual uh, tendency is to want the more historically appropriate ones, because once things are gone, they are gone. And it's our job, if possible, to preserve the historic character of Somerville for the future. So when they came to us originally, and part of the proposal included low-E windows, we said no. Um, and we approved the rest of the project, and they went off a little bit disappointed, and we thought it was over. And then they came back to us. Um, they're pretty stubborn. They came back to us, and they said, we know you said no low-E windows, but we'd like you to reconsider that. Um, and by the way, we'd like you to reconsider it on a pretty short time frame because we basically need to get started on construction on this project, and we don't want to get one kind of window and then be stuck with it if you're willing to think about doing low E windows. And so we actually held a special meeting so that we could listen to this some more about it. Um, did you testify also at that meeting? I can't remember. No. Okay. Um, and, and the upshot of the meeting was we said, yep, we're going to let you do low E windows uh, here, and, um, and thank you for being persistent um, in coming back. We have not changed our overall policy, but it's made us think differently, and maybe we will do more of those uh, in the future. So thanks for sticking to your guns there and coming back when you felt strongly about it and not, not taking no for an answer the first time and getting yes the second time. You were. Thank you. Um, a couple of details that people may overlook if they don't look closely, but I want people to notice the copper downspouts. Um, which would have been fairly characteristic um, at the time, but nowadays most people, even if they're restoring a house, um, don't go to that kind of trouble. And that, that detail just sort of tells you a lot about the kind of attention and detail that these folks and their architect put into the building. Is Sam Saren here? Sam did the architectural drawing, and I'd love to be able to talk with him about it. Um, one of the things that you've probably noticed in some of these architectural drawings um, is when you get flat on the front elevation like this, it looks very different than standing on the street and looking up at it. And one of the things in particular is how different their roof lines look when you can really see them head on, right? If we, if we were all 25 feet tall, um, it would look like this to us all the time. But most of us are shorter than 25 feet, and we see it from looking up the street. And um, it both means the students... Um, need to take a different kind of view. They need to look at it differently in order to see what it would look like if you could look on straight on, and then they get to share it with us, and we get to look at this and see uh, what a different kind of view, which reflects what the, the thinking of the architects or the builders or the designers who put into the building originally. Okay. Is, is Keda, Keda Hernandez here? Okay, yes. Okay, so come on up, Kata. So is this your drawing up here? Yeah. Okay, great. So, so tell us about what it was like working on this. Um, when the teacher first told us that we were going to do this project, um, she put the pictures out on the table, and I saw the picture of this house, and it caught my attention immediately. And so I just grabbed it without looking at the other houses, and I immediately started working on it. And it was kind of hard to draw, especially because it was my first time drawing a house. And I was actually the last person to finish drawing their house. And one of my classmates started teasing me about it. But then my art teacher came up to us and said that it's because I was genuinely trying to work hard on it. Wait, it shows in, in, the, in the picture. Thank you. And, and, and the angle that you chose to draw it from really brings out a lot of the detail that we were talking about before. And if you go back to the earlier slide for a moment, right, and now, and now go to the, to the hand-drawn slide. You can see what a very different view the, the architect or the engineer has of a house like this as compared to an artist who's giving us the, just the kind of view that we would have if we were walking down the street. What year are you in school, Kata? Okay, so I'm hoping we're going to get another three years having you work on this project with us. That's great. Thank you so much. Okay, 
So I just want to say about this project that any of you who live on Meacham Street or go down Meacham Street will know and have watched this house become transformed over the last year or so, will understand what an amazing transformation it was. Um, could we just see the first slide again, the before slide? So that's what they started with. And um, a lot of the detail is like covered up with the shingling and the, you know, you can't, there's no brackets on the bay windows or on the roof. Um, the porch is not what it should be. And now let's go to the after. And look at the amazing amount of work that's been done that's really brought the house back. It's just really something. So thank you so much for all your hard work and attention. The next house is 20 George Street, and um, the owner is Ari Goldschneider. Is this the owner here? Oh, here he comes. This is a, another um, mansarded house, but this is a very unusual house. It's like a double house. It wraps around the corner. And this was a really wonderful project. Um, it's in East Somerville. And um, notice the door hood over that door. And then could we cite, see some after photos? This was an enormous difference. And they actually replicated the door hood to its original form. And is this a rental house or was it yeah, for sale? It's a, it's a rental. It was a rental. One thing that I really like about this project is it really shows how a property owner who's not, and you don't live in the house, right? I do not. Who's not planning to live in the house can give a building um, this enormous care and attention to detail and really um, commit to making the building as wonderful looking as he can. And um, it just really improves the streetscape of Somerville. So here you go. So I just have a come up to the mic. Yeah, a uh, a short list of things we uh, we did here. So we removed the vinyl siding, which just destroys historic homes, and found asbestos shingling under that. Removed the asbestos shingling and found clapboard that I was hoping would be salvageable, but was not. So removed that and got down to the sheathing. Moved the vinyl windows, replaced with two over two historic windows. Um, had to redo the whole soffit. Um, custom dental molding, uh, drip casing, uh, dormer work, just the list goes on and on. Uh, all credit to my contractor, Jason Toledo of JT Construction, who is uh, an incredible, incredible craftsman. Um, in addition to the, uh, to the work on the house, we ripped out the entire, the entire um, landscaping, which was asphalt, and planted native shrubbery, and have a nice added a nice walkway as well as an uh, historically accurate um, fence. So incredible amount of uh, work. It took about six months. Thank you again. And do we have is um, uh, Kijin Chow here? So can we see the next slide? And tell us about your drawing here. All right, so to be completely honest, this house was a lot harder than I thought it would be. <laughs> At first glance, it looked pretty symmetrical, but no, that completely fooled me. However, at the end of it, I like, really enjoyed it. It was fun, and I learned a lot. Plan to go on in yes. this? Yes. And uh, is Lola Vera here, please? No? Can we see the next slide? So we have some, we have a hand drawing, hand done drawing, um, which also won an award. This is one honorable mention. Yeah. 
And there's a third drawing. This was a very popular, no, there's no third drawing. This was a very popular um, house. A lot of the students chose it. Thank you very much. And this is in an area of East Somerville that I want to point out actually um, has a lot of wonderful, uh, richly detailed types of houses in East Somerville, some of which have not been maintained the best over the years. But what we're finding in recent years is how many people are now choosing to actually invest in the properties and bring them back and restore them. So this is one example of an outstanding job that has been done and is a real um, prominent piece of the streetscape now is a corner property. Um, since I've been the one out taking pictures all the time, um, I can say that it really stands out on the streetscape and um, you've done a really nice job not only of the house but of the landscaping as well. So thank you, Ari. This next house we've described as being Greek Revival and Italianate. Um, it's actually a sort of historical anomaly. The house dates from 1845, and it would not have been Italianate at all. If you look at it closely, uh, particularly around the pediment, the top, the third story, which you can see has a bottom as well as, um, as, well as the peak of the roof, uh, it's called the pediment, and um, and it's very characteristic of Greek Revival houses. And what you can't see, but down the corners of the building originally were large corner boards called pilasters that were meant to really make it look like a little Greek temple. Greek Revival was a very popular style in the United States in the mid-1800s uh, because Americans were trying to form an American kind of architecture uh, that wasn't so tied to what Americans thought of as kind of decadent English or French or German architecture. And they said, well, who are the original democracy? That was Greek, Greece. So let's build Greek style houses. The bay window in the front was almost certainly not there, uh, nor the foundation underneath it. And probably somewhere around the turn of the 20th century, it got remodeled. Uh, the original front porch, if there was one, was replaced with a more Victorian kind of porch and a Victorian kind of bay window with Italian detailing was added in. Are Martin Scott and Mary Askew here? Thanks very much. Uh, having lived in the house 15 years, I've learned a, a couple of things. First of all, maintaining and restoring a 170-year-old house is a learning experience. It's also a partnership. The learning part of it for me involved just seeing things as we drilled through the house, uh, getting back down to the studs, seeing the two-foot-wide hardwood sheathing that you would never you'll never find again, uh, trying to figure out what species of wasp's nest it was in the back, looking at the joists with bark, things like that. Uh, they're just those images that stick in my mind. But it, the whole thing is also a partnership, obviously. It involves the family dealing with the dust, the disruption, everything else. You know, it's the rebuilding the airplane while you're flying in it thing. That. Uh, it involves working with people who know the history of the area, like Brandon, uh, like Christy Chase, and working with a contractor who is committed to the, the integrity of the house. And Walter Beebe Center and Essex Construction uh, were great about that. Uh, the project foreman, Matt uh, Hudson, is here too tonight. Okay. Thanks Let's to all. Back, come on up. Let's hear your perspective, which I'm sure is totally different from Marty's perspective. But come closer uh, yeah, yeah, this is a this is a great project to work on. Um, a little bit closer. Uh, very easy to work with uh, Marty and Mary, who were um, 
uh, insistent on um, cooperating with the Historic Commission. Uh, we got some great guidance from uh, Christy Chase uh, working through the process. And, um, you know, this really is a preservation. We took the building as is and saved everything that we could and um, restored pieces so that they'll be able to last a, a lot longer. Great, thank you. We is uh, ask Kareem um, Lamard to come up. Is Kareem here? And how about the uh, folks who worked on the any of the ceramic tiles? Or maybe one of the instructors who worked on it with them? Well, in that case, we're just going to have to show them to you. There's the CAD CAM drawing. And you can see the house in sort of its, its pristine nature. And then a lot of students worked on ceramic tiles. So let's bring up that slide. Aren't they great? Great. Thank you so much. The next property is 16 Westwood Road, and the owner is James uh, Veneziano. Is he here? Yes, he's here. Mm -hmm. Yep, here he comes. So um, this is a colonial revival house, and uh, it's one of a string of very beautiful houses in the Westwood Road Historic District. And why don't you tell us a little bit about what you did? Uh, come step up to the mic. Sure. Well, I bought the house in 1985, and I replaced the exterior shingles. How's, oh, I'm sorry. How's this? All right. Um, the railings on the top, the porch, and the three of the columns have been replaced twice. Um, we used fur the first time. The second time around, I used uh, Spanish cedar. As I did next door to the house I own next door, I used mahogany. And I've had good luck with it because it holds up very well in this weather. Um, the top windows, uh, this is an after picture. Um, there was two sliding glass aluminum windows in the dormer. And I, well, there we are, so right there. That's the old railings. They never held up well. They hold up for 10 or 15 years, but... And the top, if you notice that if you, through the trees, there's two sliding glass windows. Look horrible. Just made the whole house look horrible. So I ordered the window, and that was special order. Everything in these houses is a special order. I think you know that, whoever's done this. Um, I have to say that my contractor, J.P. Pino, and his subs were excellent. Um, uh, I had Jackson and Shalazy and Moriarty and Davis Square make up some of the work here. Um, the more detailed work was done by Jackson and Shalazy. And then without Eagle Bank and Bill Nolan, I went to them twice. I refinanced that property twice because it just keeps on. It's a very expensive proposition. I still have to put on top the railings. They're being made up and I had to wait in line for them because it's a big deal. You know, those columns with the urns. So that's going to go way up on the top of the roof. And that's it. It should be done. But the paint job is new, and the shutters are wood, and I'm ready to be done. That's it. <laughs> Thanks. I, I, would oh, yeah, I would just like to I'll say sit. that those, um, sometimes if you look at um, the, a, a particular part of work that's been done, and in this case it was the windows on the dormer, the sliders were completely inappropriate, and the fact that he's replaced them with more appropriate windows um, does a great deal for the house. Much, I think you got many, many, in terms of the looks of the house, you got much more than the money that you put into it for that particular part of right, it. Right, right. You got a lot of bang for your bucks, in other oh, words. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was expensive. Yeah, it. yeah. Um, so... Yeah. Um, is uh, Stephen Sampson here, please? Oh, uh, yes, he's been up here before. 
And this is the CAD drawing. Just tell us about this here. Can you speak into the mic? Um, it's pretty much the same exact thing as the last one. <laughs> Yeah, I know it, it was um, easy to do, hard to do. You learned something? What, what can you tell us about the experience? The hardest part was probably doing the up, upper porch, trying to like trim out like the window and all that, trying to get it perfect. Uh, uh, Stephen actually is being modest. He's actually done a number of properties <laughs> for this, actually, and he's learned a lot, and he says it's easy, but I don't think it really was. So, he's <laughs> But anyway, um, we look forward to having many more from you as well. So today, you get one certificate for this one is Westwood Road, and of course, your drawing as well. Um, and you already got a pin, right? So <laughs> I'd also like to comment that um, Jimmy Venanciano is well known to us because he owns a number of properties in the city. He happens to live in one of the ones next door to this one that um, he won an award for the other property that he did. I think he, um, uh, kicking and screaming maybe, I don't know, um, came back in and did the other property as well. He's been waiting to do that, and he did a fine job. And Westwood Road, if you haven't been down there, is a wonderful um, local historic district. It's actually a collection of houses. Um, there that um, is unusual in the city. We have a lot of what we call single building districts, which are unique to Somerville, just so you know. Um, we started this back when I first started um, with the city, is designating houses that were, um, we thought, worthy of designation, but there was only one building we could do at a time because all the other properties around them were in pretty tough shape and did not, were not eligible. So rather than lose that one property, we went to the Mass Historical Commission and we said, well, it says one or more houses in the district, so we're going with a single building district, which was not very well liked by the um, state, but they came around and let us do it. And so we do have a number of them. And Westwood Road is one major exception to that. Meacham Road, where you just saw earlier, is another exception that we have a number of wonderful properties there. But but Jimmy, you've actually contributed now two houses to the streetscape there, and thank you very much. And he just recently bought plaques to put on the houses as well. So um, any of you that are here tonight um, that own a historic property and don't have a plaque, um, please come see me, and I'd love to talk to you about making that possible. So thank you, Jimmy. Thank you. Is Nicholas Protopopoulos here? Tell us about your drawing. Uh, well, I did my drawing in, in, in just my art class, and I, I treated it like any other assignment. Uh, the right side's a bit uh, off, I think, but uh, it turned out pretty nicely. Uh, you know, the last thing I gotta ask is, I gotta ask the audience, actually, what do, you, what do you think about that? You see that, the window in the center with the three sides? Does that look uh, a bit off to you from the, from the little house thing on the, on the, on the roof? Because I had some trouble with that, and it was driving me a bit crazy, so. I don't know, what do you think? Yeah? Okay, good. That's great, all right, great to hear. What year are you in? I'm a sophomore. Sophomore, oh well, good, so I hope that you continue to do We've this. got another one, he's a sophomore. He's got two more years with us. <laughs> was this a good experience for you? Okay, great. That's great. This is for your portfolio, which will keep growing, hopefully, over the next couple of years. Thanks again. Somehow, Abby had gotten all of the second empire houses, the ones with the mansard roofs tonight, but finally, I have one. Um, and as, as with all of the ones that Abby showed you before, they are very characteristic with this roof. Um, they also often have other things like, um, like door hoods and, and window hoods, but it's really the roof that defines the Second Empire uh, building. Is door woodwork here? Okay, totally understandable. So we'll, we'll just have to look at it ourselves and you can see just how extensive the work was by looking at the before and the during. Before we get to the after. But before we, I want you to compare the porches uh, in the after and I'll go back to the before. So they had come in with a proposal to us to restore the porch 
but basically on the same layout here. And as you can see, the stairs, the porch goes all the way to the end of the building and the stairs go down from there. Uh, and that's what we'd approved. And then they came back to us and they said, we've torn the porch apart and we now know what the porch was like originally and we know what the stairs were like. And they are not like what you saw and they're not like what you approved. The stairs were actually inside the porch. And we said, well, great, thank you for figuring that out. And of course, that's the way to do it if that's how they were originally. And so you can see not so much, you can't see it as much in the picture here on the right, but let's get one where, where we see the house from more of a distance. You, no, go that picture over there. You can see how the right-hand steps are set into the porch because that's what the evidence that they found when they pulled it all apart. Is Marcus Thomas here? Come on up. Lovely drawing. Tell us about working on it. Um, let me give you a mic so you can hear you. Um, it was hard and easy at the same time. The hardest part was making those two windows. And, keep the, keep the mic oh, on. making those two windows in the side because I didn't know if it was, was going to be the exact measurement like the one on the side on the right, but it was actually two different measurements. The, the, the dormers on, on the roof on the sides? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I thought they were the same, but actually when we went outside in measurement, it was actually different. Uh -huh. That's really amazing uh, to see that and, and amazing that you did that kind of level of work in detail and measuring it that you could see the difference. I would have probably measured one side and figured the other side must be the same. It really speaks well that you you did that persistence to make sure that you were doing it right. Thank you. What year are you in in school? Uh, I'm a junior. Uh-huh. Okay. We're going to have you back next year, I hope, working on this? Of course. Great. Thank you so much. Do you have any aspirations toward architectural rendering in, um, after you get done, do you think? You can be honest and say, no, I'm an English major. Uh, I don't know <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. Thank you. Uh, the last house that we have um, that we're giving an award to tonight is 10 Cross Street, and the owner is Ed he uh, Henricks. Is is he here tonight? Come on up. Hi, tell us a little bit about your project. Uh, here, with the mic. Okay, so um, I moved to Somerville in 1993 and then bought this place in uh, 1998. Um, it's a brick row house. This is one of five units. Um, over the last couple of years, I noticed the um, Bay, the bay window area in the front was, um, yeah, was kind of like bowing away from the front. There was big cracks kind of like in the bricks. So um, I had to get the brickwork done. I hired um, Magno Silva from uh, MS Stone and Masonry in Revere, excellent stonemason. Um, he had to repair some of the lintels um, by the windows it's um, old sandstone. The house was built in um, 1877. So he r restored the, a couple of the um, lintels by the windows to the original design. Um, and then we found out that the ledge um, soffit at the top underneath the um, roof line was completely rotted. So I hired um, uh, Boston Smart Builders, uh, Celio Dos Santos, to um, reframe that. And we replaced the um, slate shingles around the um, front of the, the roof with um, new slate. It's <coughs> My neighbors kind of joked with me that um, I made their houses look bad because um, I restored mine, so now it's up to them to sort of 
bring the rest of the building up to speed. <laughs> Well, that's exactly why we support preservation and people like you because that's actually what happens is one person does really nice work and then the other neighbors are embarrassed and so they get to it too. Exactly. Hopefully that'll happen. And again, it's um, very hard to find a good stonemason, so I recommend... Um, Anything to say about this project? I, I recommend Magna. I just say thank you to Ed to enjoy uh, us to do the project. And uh, it's uh, hard to do it because the, all these stones have to do it by hand. But I'm happy to how it's come after. It's how beautiful. Thank you. So I think this is a good example of how sometimes, like a preservation project, you know, it's not like this total makeover. It's not like something that, you know, you drive down the street and you say, wow. But it's something that's really important because it has to do with stabilizing the building and preserving it from. Um, falling apart, basically. Exactly. So, yeah, and you did very good work, and it's important when you have to do work like that is to do it in a way that preserves the original house. You did. Thank you. And hopefully you're inspiring your uh, co-owners next door to you to do some of that same type of work. <laughs> Is Mar uh, Marlon Ayala uh, Marzaregos here? <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to repronounce her name for us, please. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for your patience, too. Tell us about your project. Well, at first, it was, it looked kind of easy to do, but like, you have to, like you can see in the top, <laughs> well, like you can see in the top, um, the, like the, you can actually measure, there was like lines in there, but you can actually make sure it from like down. So, and like they were a little off, like, like the bay window wasn't like straight, so the lines were like not accurate together, so it was kind of a little bit hard to get the measurements, but yeah, thank you. <laughs> what, what year are you in school? Uh, I'm a junior. So do you think you'll do this again next year? Probably, yeah. Good, so you know the thing about old houses, they're, the lines are never straight. Right. <laughs> <laughs> The fact that your picture isn't up there, it just shows you how detailed and how hard it was to do that we couldn't even put it up there. It was so hard. So I want to give you a word, and I'm also going to give you pins because he actually has his whole family here, I think, and they've been very patiently sitting here waiting for their brother <laughs> to get this award. So they each get a pin as well. So thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, that basically is the awards that we're giving out tonight. Um, we appreciate your patience in sitting here for some of you that have been here for quite some time, uh, waiting for the others. Uh, remind you that we still have some food back there that we'd love for you to uh, enjoy. Um, and also we have flyers over there as well. Um, there are a couple of events coming up that I just want to mention to you, which is, um, as you already heard the mayor say and the pins um, further um, say, is this is the 175th anniversary for the city of Somerville. Actually, I should say the community of Somerville separating from um, Charlestown in 1842. So in commemoration of that, we have a number of other events planned throughout the year. Um, and one of the next ones is on June 17th, which is a Saturday at Prospect Hill Tower. Um, and we were able, the city, to restore the tower and stabilize it so you can now go up in it um, as of um, the, through CPA funds that we use for it. Um, so June 17th from 10 a.m. until noon, we will be actually having a whole Flag Day celebration there. Flag Day is usually on a, a weekday, but we're celebrating the weekend 
We will have a speaker coming to talk about the significance of the flag that's flown there. For those of you that haven't made our January 1st um, ceremony, it's very significant because we have the first flag of the United Colonies that was flown there. And this person has done a lot of research and will come talk about it in weather that's a whole lot more conducive to listening than it is on January 1st. Um, in addition to that, he will be actually doing a talk at the Somerville Museum the next day from 2 to 3 o'clock. Um, and so those are both opportunities for you to come. On Saturday, we will not only have the speaker, but we'll also have some period music, we'll have refreshments, we'll have tables, uh, and I'm forgetting something else it seems like we'll have that day. But anyway, um, hope you'll come. It's free, open to the public. Oh, tours, docent tours. So you can go up in the tower and actually learn about the history of the site. So that's one more thing. And then um, two events that we usually do um, in May have been postponed to the fall, which is the historic bike ride. We have an opportunity to cover a lot more ground than we can on a walking tour. So we'll um, be doing that in September, and we have the Union Square walking tour we do every year. And there's other events planned that I won't detail tonight. If you go to our city's calendar, um, you'll see all those events, but there's a lot happening this year. So there's a flyer over there that tells you about the other openings for the Prospect Hill Tower if that particular date doesn't work for you or you have other friends who want to come. We have a docent program that's not only the Prospect Hill Tower, um, from May and through October, but also um, at the Milk Rose Cemetery, as well as the old powder house at the other end of the city. And it's a historic, iconic um, structure as well. So lots of opportunity to learn more about history in your own community, and I hope you'll do just that. Thank you again for coming tonight. Um, I hope you'll support the people that supported us tonight. And again, thank you so much for the work that you've all done, either on your drawings or on your properties. It's really very inspiring and exciting to be part of this community. Thank you.